So 2020 has been kind of one of those years. Um, we built a new car, kind of had some incidents. We crashed the trailer. I crashed the trailer, no brakes. Backed it into a big ditch in West Virginia. Yeah, I think this year was definitely a year of uh, uh, putting us to the test as far as how much shit could be thrown at us and how much we could take. So, I mean, yeah, the trailer incident was definitely kind of a, a shitty thing to start off the year. I mean, that was our first event. We had some issues with the Fox body, had to end up loading up the GT350 in the truck, and then we still had that issue, which sucked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we can walk, kind of walk through the entire year of each race and event and talk about how we did. I mean, we didn't get a chance to do a lot of videoing this year and uh, since we've been, been focusing more on getting the car developed and everything like that, it's been hard to try to do everything without having a, a third person to be able to do video. So yeah, like you said, Charlotte, we had that. So we didn't end up getting the race, but we did get to go hang out with the Optima crew. That was pretty fun to see everyone and uh, see all the cars running. Had some good sushi with Billy Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, didn't the chick like start hitting on him at the at the yeah, restaurant? Yeah, there's usually a chick hitting on him whenever we take him somewhere. Yeah. We, um, we took Luke, our machinist intern, with us to go racing and then ended up crashing the uh, truck and trailer, so he got a little experience. What uh, else? We. Uh, the next race was what, Road America? Road America. Road America was... Eventful. <laughs> good. I finished third in the truck. Um, I kind of backed it into a tire wall. I hit some fluid on the track and it whipped me around like instantly. Um, you had your incident with the Fox body and a wall. So he had a, basically a DNF and I got a, I got a third. Um, I'm not real happy with my performance with autocross or speed stop. So I'm going to do some stuff to the truck to upgrade the brakes and uh, our backup engine, which is our, used to be our primary engine, is a, the engine builders right now, Wagner. So it'll come back with about 100 more horsepower than we had last year. So I should be pretty dominant on the road courses if they're big. Um, get some braking. I mean, I had some braking issues that it that led to me spinning out and the crash damage you see on the truck here at VIR. But I rallied and, and got it go going. And you had some technical issues at VIR with the the new new car has too much shit on it. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think it's we saw that with the truck too in the, the first year, and I think we had COVID to kind of sort stuff out and, and be able to try stuff and. We're really just seeing some small things kind of pop up that are causing us to have issues on the road course, which in the autocross and the speed stop stuff, we're, we're doing awesome on and just need to progressively speed up. I mean, the Fox body is completely different than the C10. I mean, you probably have a major difference between the 250 and this, this driving style. So switching from something that's big and bulky, bulky to something that's really nimble and high horsepower has been uh, it's been nice to be able to have more control but uh, finding the limitations of what the car can handle and what I can handle are definitely a, uh, a uh, learning curve so what else did we do we went to the good guys autocross we both did actually pretty decent there both ended up the shootout you, you beat Alice which was fun yeah um, yeah we ended up the Fox got moved to the was that the Pro X class yeah, so you were up against like tube chassis, like 2,000 pound cars with a 3,400 pound, 3,500 pound box body. Yeah, I mean, and Alonzer Jr. was hauling ass all weekend. I mean, he's always been dominant on the, the uh, autocross, so I mean, that car has been, what, that's the fifth or sixth year that they've been campaigning that car and have a full crew, so I mean, props to him for being so dominant, but. It's nope. kind of expected. <laughs> yep. Well, we drove the cars to the show too, so we didn't trailer them. We didn't really take any tools other than a compressor and a torque wrench and some minor stuff. Um, a little time over the winter, I'm gonna get the truck. Um, at VIR, I did tweak the chassis a little bit, so I'm gonna take it to the frame shop this week. We have new sheet metal hung, get the motor out. Then I'm gonna build some new spindles for the front and we're gonna put a floater rear end in the back just to the majority of the brake issues I have is in the front, not the rear, but 
I'm just gonna go ahead and make everything the best that it can be because we're gonna run this year at Road America, I think is our first event, or NOLA. Either NOLA or Road America from what the schedule's looking at uh, as far as Optima. And then it sounds like we're gonna be going to Daytona if we can get uh, tickets. So I think that's definitely a big boy track and yeah. not one that we wanna skimp out on braking or handling. Yeah, so. Daytona should be a hoot and uh, with the truck should have about 900 horsepower so it should be I should be running similar times to some of the cars that raced in the 24 so yeah what else uh, so we did VIR um, and then well at VIR you want to um, invite to the Optima series but had a decline for working the show uh, I got to go play out out in the uh, seam a lot with uh, all the Optima guys, but... Uh, you did some epic donuts I saw on yeah. the video. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, the Fox body definitely has the capability to do some serious uh, burnout, so we got to do that. Um, and then we're still kind of running into motor issues on the road course, which kind of set me back. I mean, the Outlaw class is definitely a step up. I mean, the guys that were at the OUSCI event are extremely fast. I mean, um, one of the guys almost set the new track record by, I think he was like two or three tenths off the track record in a street car on 200 treadwear tires. So, I mean, that's hauling ass. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I mean, I think this year has definitely been a year of learning, uh, adapting and figuring, figuring stuff out so we can kind of attack into next year. But we, uh, we, Got back from SEMA and PRI. Um, There's some really cool stuff at PRI this year. Um, we got to check out the uh, twin turbo Godzilla that they're giving away. What do you think of that? It's pretty cool. I mean, it had some of the parts we uh, built for Indy Power Products on it, so mm -hmm. it's nice to see our parts out there. Um, and for people that really don't know, that uh, Fox body was built as a development car for that engine, and it kind of got carried away in the process. But I bought another Fox body which we should do a video on to go ice racing because we need some more seat time. And it's mid-December here and it's snow and it's gonna be like high later this week, it's gonna be like two degrees with lows in like minus 20, minus 10, actual, not wind chill. So we uh, got some wheels and some studded tires, so we're gonna be heading to Minnesota and see if I can terrorize the road course on the ice up there in the winter time. Yeah, if you haven't uh, checked it out, we have a ice racing video from, what was that last year? Or two years, uh, two years ago now. Uh, but uh, there's one part where you can't really see it all, but uh, we may have caused, a, well, he may have caused a big uh, pile up on the ice racing uh, uh, track. So, but uh, yeah, that should be a fun, fun time. It's always something that I get to look forward to towards the uh, winter time. Like just being able to go drift and it's a great platform to learn car control. I mean, yeah. yeah. So anybody who wants to learn more about drifting or car control or some basic stuff, Texas Drift Academy takes uh, three Nissan 350Z drift cars up there with studded Pirelli, like with the WRC car shoes when they race on ice in the in the winter time. And it's just a it's a hoot, and you can just beat the shit out of those cars, and they just take it over and over and over again. And uh, it's not that expensive, so you should get old Josh Robinson in the Texas Drift Academy. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing that. What we did that in 2020, and then 2021. I think just from that, being able to kind of understand car control a little bit better, and then even just wintertime driving, it helps a lot. But uh, but yeah, I mean. We're talking about potentially doing some grid life events, so. Grid life and Optima next year. I mean, our business is going through some some changes. Um, you know, we own an engineering company, so we're kind of going from, we used to use a lot of contract manufacturers to build our stuff. We brought everything in house. So, you know, we upgraded our CNC department. We have six, six Haas CNC machines. We do our own circuit boards, our own circuit board design, our own software. So we brought all the pick and play stuff in house and, what we were doing today, honestly, was doing some installs of our new products that we displayed at SEMA. So we're, we're launching those and getting ready for those to ship. So you need to check out our channel and uh, you can see some of the new products we're releasing too. Heck yeah, so hopefully we can uh, have a better 2023 than 2022 and hopefully find us uh, racing a little bit more. I mean, we did get a win. We got uh, 
Holly Ford Fest. Yeah, you know, I forgot you won that. You were the Grand Master Champion or whatever they call it. Yeah, the uh, Vintage class. So, uh, and then Justin Peachy, who also races in some of the Optima events and some of the Holly events, he actually won the Triple Crown for yeah. LS Fest, Mopar. Fest and Ford yeah. Fest, but Justin Peachy's a super experienced driver, and yeah. I saw on some social media thing he put the whip down on Cletus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, he's uh, he's definitely a force to be reckoned with. So hopefully we get a race against him a little bit this year and uh, see what see what new uh, competitors we have at Grid Life. So we'll probably cap the video off here, and uh, we hope yeah, you guys... we'll give you a quick shop tour. I'll yeah. show you what we're working on. I mean this. It's kind of messy in here. This is this is our hobby shop. This is not our normal business. So if you want to watch about our normal business, go to our corporate video. This is completely the screw off shop. So this is where I go to hide from everybody. Um, it's next door to our company, but um, we've got a couple things, a K5 Blazer that I'm buttoning up, a C10 that I need to finish, the race truck, and then I'm building my buddy Mike's Camaro. And then out in the parking lot is our next shittiest uh, Fox body to build the ice race car out of and there may be another project or two coming Yeah, so definitely a lot to uh, look forward to so We uh, we hope you guys have a uh, good Christmas and have a good new year and we'll hopefully see you in 2023 Yep, yeah, we feel really blessed too to be in the position we're at to be able to screw off a little bit um, And we're extremely fortunate. We can't thank all the people that help us out um, You know, we don't we don't really have formal sponsors. We have great relationships with our supply chain, and uh, you know everybody that helps us out from Wagner Engines, Forge Line, Brembo, Brembo Brakes, all these companies. They're they're just Recaro. They've been great to work with. Detroit Speed, um, No Limit Engineering. I mean, the list can go on and on. And I know I'm not getting everybody, um, but without them, without being able to have a successful company, we wouldn't be able to. Uh, screw off a little bit so thanks and have a happy holidays actually merry fucking christmas <laughs>